if the park is still open. Yep. Yay. That's sick. So I ended up getting the fittings I need for our fuel rail in order to attach the AN fittings. Uh, this is the piece that actually came on the fuel rail. And I believe that this is for using one of those like banjo bolts, you know what I'm saying? So uh, the new piece that I just picked up from Lopers, this uh, adapts it to, I think this is dash six. Uh, but I ordered all dash eight fuel line, which realistically dash six would have been plenty enough for this engine. I mean, we're running all motor, you know what I'm saying? But my idea behind that is um, I, I just want this fuel system to be able to handle basically anything. Um, so if I end up wanting to turn it up later or do another build and turbo it or something, my fuel system is going to be able to handle it. You know what I mean? So I, I did that when I ordered my fuel injectors as well, which those are on the way. I posted a thing on, on Instagram. It was like the, the delivery notice. You know what I mean? This one right here, I posted this on my Instagram. Told you guys to guess what it is that, uh, basically guess what you think could be coming in and literally nobody guessed it let me see <laughs> uh yeah spoon engine with t66 turbo <laughs> but yeah nobody guessed it it's actually the fuel injectors i have the fuel injectors and a uh fuel filter on the way uh those are basically the only things that i still need for the fuel system but we're not going to be getting into this today. Well, I mean, hopefully. I'm hoping to get into it this weekend anyway. Uh, right now, we need to get the front splitter fabricated for the car. So, yeah, it's time to make a template of this bumper. So I think something kind of like that would be pretty cool. I mean, that might be, that might be a little bit far out, but whatever. I don't mind the arrow looking a little aggressive on the car. That's fine with me. I have nothing against aggressive arrows. So now what we're gonna do is actually cut this piece of cardboard out and then try to just kind of mock it up on the car. Try to get the bumper kind of mocked up and then get this positioned in there. Double check, make sure that that shape is gonna be A-OK -okay, uh, before we actually transfer that to our piece of aluminum. This foam is about, what is that, like three inches thick. Uh, this stuff works really freaking good for cutting really anything with a jigsaw. Originally, I wasn't going to run a bumper support. Thanks, camera, for focusing. I appreciate it. Originally, I wasn't going to run a bumper support on the Khaki Civic. Of course, uh, weight savings, you know what I mean? I'm trying to save weight everywhere I can. Now, as far as the front bumper, like, since making that decision, I have, I have changed my mind from watching other people uh, struggle with traction and things like that. So, anything that you can leave as far as weight on the front of the car anything that's past the wheels you know what i'm saying anything up here like you kind of want some weight up there bro for traction it's not no secret that front wheel drive cars uh whenever you make any kind of decent amount of power or torque uh, you struggle with traction problems man so um, that's kind of my idea here. I am going to go ahead and put the bumper support on. Now, before we mock up the uh, the splitter and continue, I kind of need to get the bumper on there. So I was looking at it and I'm like, well, shit, man. I was going to try to custom fab something and I actually have some of those quick, I have some of those quick clips coming uh, in the mail. They're not here yet. 
um, that I'm probably going to still end up using somewhere because I want to be able to remove the bumper, you know, quickly. <laughs> For the most part, I went ahead and I put the bumper support back on so that we actually have a way to mount the bumper. Right now, I'll probably change it later. Um, I'll, I'll leave the support. What I'm thinking about doing is having the support in there and actually putting those quick clips on the support in there, like where it would normally bolt up. Um, so I can just kind of reach in there, push it, and then pull, you know? We'll figure that out later, but for now, we just got to keep moving forward. <laughs> uh, I can't help but to think of TJ Hunt anytime that I say that. But since being that I was planning on not running a bumper support, as you guys can see, I did end up robbing the bumper support from the spare hatch that we have. That car has come in very handy but i i have to say it does break my heart a little bit the more and more i keep taking parts off of it i mean i need them you know what i mean it's just i don't know i'm sure you guys understand i the car is basically ready to be a running car throw an engine in it but i just keep robbing shit from it Bumper support is mounted and I went ahead and I cut this little piece of material off of here uh, because we're not going to need that bro and honestly I think that this is around the area that the fuel pump is going to be mounted so I just wanted to make sure and cut that off so we didn't have any clearance issues now what I'm going to do is take the sander and just hit this edge right here just to kind of clean that up a little bit and then we can go ahead and get the bumper mounted up If you look underneath here, what is hanging the lowest is the traction bar right here. It's kind of hard to see because the sun in the background is darkening the camera angle. But yeah, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and tape this thing up here. Uh, I'm going to tape it on the back side of the bumper on both sides and just basically try to get it to sit up here in a position where I can kind of hit the cardboard from underneath and make impressions of the traction bar just to get an idea how far up to cut. So base, ugh, basically, gonna have to cut like a window in this thing. Like rent, rent, rent. So I got it taped up there and I made an impression, which you can barely see it. It's right here. Um, I measured back, which it just like a little bit past there, which was eight inches. So first thing that I did is I actually measured the traction bar and it is exactly three feet wide. So I, I marked three feet inside of our splitter here, right in the center. So I, I forget what it was. I forget what the measurement is, but the distance from here to here is exactly the same on both sides. So we, I basically centered three feet inside of here and then measured back eight inches, eight inches, drew a straight line across, and then that's our section we got cut out. And I'm gonna go ahead and test fit it one more time. I might end up having to cut it up a little bit further. I don't know, we'll see. If you're kind of if you're kind of new here, uh, this is my roll tape technique. You just kind of tape a piece of tape on the edge like that, and you just roll it over and retape it back to itself. Um, I I use this for so many different things when painting, when making templates, when you know, it's just it's a really handy thing to know. You know what I'm saying?
so there it is. I gotta show you guys really quick because it is not wanting to stay up there like at all because I had to reposition it. So now the tape ain't very sticky. If you notice, this side sticks out. I mean, that looks like it's probably about a half of an inch. And this side is a little bit less. That's about a quarter of an inch, but that's fine. Uh, we can do those fine adjustments whenever it's at, because there is some play in there. Like you can shift it a little bit left and right. Yeah, buddy, now this is my piece of aluminum. This is just a scrap piece that we had at work. About an eighth of an inch thick. So it's pretty thick stuff. It's not quite as thick as I was wanting it to be, but I mean, this is what I was able to find on such short notice. So now the most important part of uh, making a piece like this, we have it all cut out and everything. Everybody in this neighborhood is a fucking race car driver, dude. Everybody. We've got this all cut out. Now, the thing is, is I mean, obviously we cut this with a jigsaw. Now, while my cuts aren't horrible, they're not perfect. You know what I'm saying? If we were to just go ahead and paint this and throw it on the car, you would be able to see that like this cut here for instance like the the jigsaw was just dancing all over the place so that's kind of a that's kind of a wavy cut you know what i'm saying the most important thing to making pieces like this out of aluminum is to go back with a sander this is the best way the 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 easiest way to get these cuts all straightened out you just basically go through it and now we're going to shape our piece and get everything looking a lot more cleaner than what it does right now. Now I know a lot of people don't have a compressor and everything at home or a sander like that, but I mean electric sander will work or even if you just take some sandpaper and put on a block of wood, you know what I mean? Anything like that to go ahead and straighten your cuts out and just give it a much cleaner look. But I'm gonna go ahead and do that uh, with this. I'm not gonna record it, honestly, because my freaking battery is dying. So um, I'm gonna do two birds with one stone, man. Let my battery charge while I get that thing all shaped up. Quite a few hours later, I, I think it's been, I don't know, it's been like three or four hours. Uh, the sun is now down, no more sun. <laughs> but I got this thing sanded, it actually shaped up really well, dude. Came out really clean. Uh, I had to clearance a couple sections right here, just these corners, just to get it to slide in a little bit further because on the traction bar, it's got uh, little spots that kind of stick out a little further, but I already fabbed up a couple brackets. This is for the passenger side, bolting it directly to the traction bar right there. Before I took the front bumper back off, I measured how far this thing was from the ground, and it sat right at about five inches. So where I have this plate mounted up right here, this is exactly five inches from the bottom. I oversized the holes a little bit, so I do have a little bit of play, so I can loosen the bolts and adjust it up or down basically to I just I basically just wanted to sit really tight up against the bottom of the bumper you know what I mean so uh, my idea here is is whenever this thing is actually mounted on the car I want to be able to pull the bumper straight off and put it straight back on without moving the plate you know what I'm saying I want this to be kind of like a shelf that like holds the bumper for the most part. But what I need to do now is get this second bracket bolted up and then I'm gonna slide this thing up underneath there. I need a mark in relation where this is gonna land on the splitter and then we'll pull it all back off and then I have to actually mount these. These are gonna be mounted directly to it, probably something like that. And that will give us a mounting point on these two ends and once we get that finished, then I'm gonna figure something out for in the center. So 
So we have the brackets mounted on the car securely, nice and tight, and then we slid the diffuser up there, basically got it exactly where we needed it to be. Um, I even test fit the bumper, made sure everything was centered, uh, make sure everything was just basically the way I want it. Then got underneath the car and marked exactly where this bracket sits uh, against the diffuser. So now we take the diffuser off, take the brackets off, and all I have to do is go ahead and line it back up with the marks that I made and I know it'll be sitting right in the exact same spot that it was when we have it on the car. So now what I'm gonna do is just go through, I'm probably gonna drill five holes in each one. One, two, three, four, then one right in the center. Um, and then I'm gonna rivet these brackets actually to the diffuser. Well, the weather is beautiful right now, bro. Like it's not hot, it's not cold, but it is It is a little bit warm out here because I got my little dude hanging out with me. What's up, bear? What's up, buddy? Hi, bear. Say what's up, man? Yeah, mom's at church right now. Um, now what I'm doing is I'm actually test fitting the bumper one more time. I wanna make sure everything is centered. Then I'm gonna make basically like an L bracket. It'll shoot straight down and have like a 90 bend and then I'll rivet it all the way across here and then we'll probably just put like some screws going straight into there and then that will keep this thing nice and sturdy. All right, well, there it is, dude. I'm telling, this thing is freaking solid, man. I ain't going anywhere. It's mounted at three points on each side and then all the way across the center. So this is not only mounting it, but it's also kind of holding it nice and sturdy. Gives us a nice platform to set up the fuel cell, though I think I'll probably put a gap between here. If we do rub this on, you know, speed bumps or whatever, I don't want it to be applying pressure to the fuel cell, you know what I'm saying? But Came out pretty good, man. What are you, oh, Bill? Are you falling asleep, dude? Ugh. I know I said I wanted to get to absolutely everything this weekend, but I'm already out of time, bro. This thing took me a lot longer to fabricate uh, than I expected, unfortunately, so. But, um, I, cause I, I have to get this video up for you guys, and I have a lot of cleaning up to do. But, while I have the car up on the jack, I think it's a good time to go ahead and test fit my header. Not in this video, unfortunately. You guys have to wait till next video, but I did end up getting my header. I know you guys can see, obviously it's a 1320 header, but you don't know which one. So next video, we'll get the header opened up, get it installed. I have some header wrap. We gotta wrap the damn thing. And that's when we'll go ahead and try to focus on getting a lot of this stuff installed. We need to do the fuel system as well. So, oh my God. There's just not enough time in the day, bro. Peace out. See you on the next one.